Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a revision question on vectors. So let's take a look at this question. Question number one, part A. Show that the lines r is equal to 2i plus j plus t into minus i plus 2j plus 4k and r is equal to minus i plus 3j plus 2k plus s into 2i minus 5j plus 3k are perpendicular to each other. So let's think about this question. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So we have the vector equations of these lines. These lines have been given in as part of the question. Now remember the condition for when two lines are perpendicular. So let's go to the screenshot just to remind you. So if you're given two lines with equations, vector r is equal to the vector a1 plus lambda vector m1 and vector r is equal to vector a2 plus mu times vector m2. Now what we need to do is we need to look at the direction vectors of these lines and m1 and m2 are the direction vectors of the lines. And if we calculate the dot or the scalar product of the direction vectors, and if the outcome is zero, that means that your lines are perpendicular. So that is the condition for perpendicular lines. So if you're unaware of this condition, I have created a video explaining the theory along with examples, and I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Let's get back to the paper and pen. So here are the given vector equations of the lines. And let's look at the direction vectors. So I'll name this M1. And I'll name this direction vector of the second line M2. So let's calculate M1 dot M2. So let's work out the scalar product of M1 and M2. So M1 being minus I plus 2j plus 4k and let's dot that with 2i minus 5j plus 3k. Now to work out the scalar or the dot product all we do is multiply the coefficients of i, j and k and then add. So if I multiply the coefficients of i I have minus 1 times 2 so minus 1 into 2, always plus, then multiply the coefficients of j, so we have plus 2, multiplied by minus 5, again plus, multiply the coefficients of k, so we have plus 4, multiplied by plus 3. So that is what we do, just to recap, you multiply the coefficients of i, j and k and add to work out the dot or scalar product. So let's continue. Minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. 2 into minus 5, minus 10. 4 into 3 is 12. And if you sum this, you're going to get 0. So 0 is the answer to m1 dot m2. So remember the condition, if the dot product of the direction vectors of the lines equates to zero, that means that your lines are perpendicular. So let me just say, since m1 dot m2 is equal to zero, so therefore the lines are perpendicular to each other. So that completes part A. Now let's go back to the screenshot. So we have another part to do. Part B is show that the lines do not intersect. So let's think about this problem. Let's go back to the paper and pen. So we need to show that the lines do not intersect. So from part A, they're perpendicular. So it's not necessarily to show that the lines are parallel because the lines are not parallel. Now, just for your interest, to show that the lines are parallel, again, look at the direction vectors of the lines given. And if one of the direction vectors is a scalar multiple of the other, then the lines are parallel. But in this question, the lines are not parallel with proof that the lines are perpendicular. Now, in the next step, we need to equate the two vector equations of the lines. So let's do that. So the first line is 2i plus j 
plus t into minus i plus 2j plus 4k and let's equate that to the vector equation of the second line minus i plus 3j plus 2k plus s into and let me continue over here 2i minus 5j plus 3k so let's see whether they're um, intersecting or not but for this specific part we need to show that the lines do not intersect now from here on let's equate the components of i j and k on both sides so let's equate so by equating components of i j and k on both sides so let me explain what i mean by this so let me concentrate on the i components now on the left hand side i have an i component here as well as the t times minus i over here and on the right hand side I have a minus i over here along with an s times 2i here so I've highlighted the i components in red so we're equating the components so I have a component of 2 plus t times minus 1 which is the same as minus t okay and that is equal to as far as the right hand side is concerned I have a component of minus 1 here plus s times 2 so in other words plus 2s let's call that equation number 1 now let's do the same with the j and then the k components so if I take a green pen so I have a j component here on the left as well as t times plus 2j here and let me also underline the j components in green on the right so I have 1 here along with s times minus 5j here so let's equate components so I have plus 1 t times 2 meaning plus 2t so this is the component of j on the left hand side doing the same on the right hand side plus 3 and s times minus 5 minus 5s let me name that equation number 2 now last but not least uh, k components so on the left hand side I have a t multiplied by 4 and on the right hand side I have 2 plus s multiplied by 3 so left hand side I have t multiplied by 4 which is 4t and on the right hand side I have 2 so 2 plus s multiplied by 3 so in other words plus 3s let's call that equation 3 now the next step is you take any two equations and you solve simultaneously to work out t and s the scalars so let's take any two equations now the equations that I'm going to take are 1 and 2 so let me take these two equations but as I said earlier you can take any two equations and solve them simultaneously to work out s and t so equation number one reads 2 minus t that is equal to minus 1 plus 2s so that's number one number two reads 1 plus 2t that is 3 minus 5s that is equation 2 so here are the two equations that I've selected now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 2 in order to have a minus 2t and a plus 2t term so that I can add these to eliminate t so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 1 multiply by 2 so if we do that 2 times 2 which is 4 2 times minus t minus 2t on the left hand side 2 times minus 1 minus 2 2 times 2s plus 4s equation 2 let me keep that as is so 1 plus 2t that is equal to 3 
minus 5s. And by doing this, we can add these two equations. So if we add them, minus 2t and plus 2t are going to go. So let's continue on the reverse. 4 plus 1 is 5. So on the reverse, we have 5 on the left-hand side. That is equal to, on the right-hand side, minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So 1. And 4s minus 5s is minus s. So minus s. So if I rearrange this, s is going to be 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. So that is what you should have for the scalar s. Now, going back to our equations. Now, we're using equations 1 and 2 to solve simultaneously. We need to use 1 and 2 only in order to work out the other unknown. So we worked out s. s we had as minus 4. Let's put s into either 1 and 2. So I'm going to choose equation number 1. So let's do that. So let's put s is equal to minus 4 into equation number one. So equation number one is two minus t. So let me copy that down, two minus t. That is equal to, on the right, minus one plus two into s. So minus one plus two into, and s is minus four. Let's get rid of the brackets. So two minus t on the left-hand side, will be minus one, two times minus four is minus eight. If I simplify this further, so two minus t, minus one, minus eight is minus nine. And if I take the minus t to the right and the minus nine to the left, t is going to be 11. So that should be the value of t. So just to repeat, you only use the equations that you use to solve simultaneously to work out the unknowns. So I'm using one and two as ticked. So you strictly only use the equations that you used in order to work out the scalars S and T. Now, in order to show that these lines do not intersect, what we need to do is put the values of S, which is minus four, and t which is 11 into the equation that we haven't used. So the equation that we haven't used is equation 3. So let's mark that with a cross. So let me continue. So let me put the value of s which is minus 4 and the value of t which is 11 into equation number 3 and the idea is when you put it into equation three, if the left-hand side when simplified equates to the right-hand side when simplified, then you have intersecting lines. But if you go to the screenshot, we need to show that the lines do not intersect. So going back to the paper and pen, if we put the values of T and S, and if the left does not equate to the right, then the lines do not intersect. And in other words, we have skew lines. So skew lines are non-parallel, non-intersecting lines. So let's see whether this is the case. So here's equation three, 4t equals two plus three s. So four into t, which is 11. And we have on the right-hand side, two plus three s. So two plus three, s is minus four. So 4 into 11 is 44. And 2 plus 3 into minus 4, so 3 into minus 4 is minus 12. 2 minus 12 is minus 10. So in this case, the left-hand term does not equate to the right-hand term. So since that's the case, so since the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side. So therefore, the lines do not intersect. So that completes 
the second part, part B of the question. Now, if you're unfamiliar of the concept that I've used, I have created a video explaining the concept along with additional examples, and I'll provide links to those videos in the description below. Other than that, this completes the question and this sadly ends the video. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, a like rating is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice problems and I hope to see you again. Thank you.